Welcome to Wrinkle Society of Hope. If you are returning, I truly appreciate all your support. And if this is your first time, welcome. Today, you are going to hear a woman tell her motivational story of how she pressed through her wrinkles in life in order to become the courageous woman with a K who cared enough to share. I would love for you to subscribe to our channel and share with other people. And guess what? Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can hear about the new courageous women that are coming forward to share their stories. I am so happy for you to be here today and I can't wait for you to hear this story. Can't wait. I am here with one of my grand fam friends here. We met many moons, many moons ago, but still looking fabulous. And um, so I'm going to have you introduce yourself to the Wrinkles family. Hi, Rico's family. I am Paula McKenzie. I went to Grambling State University. There I got a master's in criminal justice and currently I'm working with law enforcement and I have a bunch of other things going on and I'll share with you a little bit later about that but it's good to be here thanks for having me yay I'm so excited my Sarah as well so oh, super yeah. excited yes aka <laughs> Alpha, Kappa Alpha Sorority Hello. Incorporated she has her pearls on today I missed that today I missed my pearls today but um yeah always a pearl because we're in pearls all the time with or without our pearls on <laughs> but as you see uh as beautiful as she is and skin as smooth as a baby and she still looks like she was back at Graham, hasn't changed at all <laughs> i don't see any wrinkles on your face but you know what <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they might be hiding. They might be hiding. So if you do, or if you would have a physical wrinkle, how do you think you would feel about that or how? Well, actually, um, I experienced the crow's feet. Um, yeah. And so when I got those, I was kind of devastated because to my knowledge and for all the things I saw about them, it was like an old lady with gray hair talking about the eye cream. And so when I saw the, that I had it, I was like, I was devastated. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I, I felt like life was about to be over. Like, seriously. <laughs> I definitely understand. I, that's where I got mine first too. And I said, wait a minute, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny that you say that. So many people have painted that if you have a wrinkle that you're way old that yep. you know you got the rocking chair you got the, gray hair you know, tell your stories gray hair and it's like what yes like, they creep up pretty on you a little bit they do you know? younger than you think right 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 <laughs> but just as like wrinkles creep up on our face out of the blue we have some wrinkles in our lives that creep up that kind of we have to really press through can you share about a wrinkle in your life that you have to press through uh, like, well, like a year ago, like, um, January 24th to 2020, I actually, um, got divorced. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, a draining process and thank God that I was able to get through it. And like, at this point I'm doing really well. Um, a lot of people have, um, really bad experience with the divorce process but actually like surprisingly like the actual day of was a pretty smooth transition to where me and the ex were actually in a really good space and we even took a selfie together it was a trip was, so yeah I would say that yeah. yeah and how long were you married 16 years oh that's a yeah. long time yeah yeah. So initially when you had made that decision or, you know, when you both had made that decision, how, how did you get through that first initial feeling of I'm about to get, you know, divorced? How did you get through that? Well, it was just like, 
coming out of denial, like, like it's not working. And I think a lot of people get stuck in that denial portion to where they waste more of each other's time. Mm. So once I got past the denial, like it's going to happen, it's just not working. I was able to come to grips and move forward and like actually like restart life Mm. because it's crazy because it's like, um, the whole divorce thing is kind of like a death. It's like you, cause you losing, you physically losing somebody out your life. Um, yeah. So for me, it was just that coming to grips and getting out of the denial phase. Cause that, that took a long time. So once you get out the denial phase, then hopefully you're good to go and you're okay with the decision that you make. Yeah. Yeah. The, were you? Do you feel like you were unhappy f- longer than you should have been in your marriage? Yeah, most definitely, mm-hmm. most definitely. Um, I think we kind of like rushed into things, mm-hmm. um, and 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 not necessarily like rushing because sometimes people rush and it's a perfect match and everything works and duh, it's beautiful forever or whatever it is. But I think um, sometimes just maybe taking a little a little extra time just to like find out who the person is and to see if you guys are even compatible, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, um, just, and this is separate from the other question I usually ask, but what advice would you give a woman that's, um, you know, her and her husband are, you know, anybody actually, man or woman that has made this decision um, for it to end, like you said, in a point that you both were at a, it seems, sounds like a peaceful point. What advice would you give them to get to that point? First, I mean, you, you know, your situation to where um, some things can be repaired. To where, I mean, if things could have been repaired in mine, I would have stayed where I was at because, you know, we could have worked through it because, you know, marriage is not all peaches and cream every day. You know, you got to take the good with the bad. And it's just playing the part that you're playing. Are you like help build it up? Are you tearing it down Mm. to where know your role of what you're doing? And if you're like actively trying to make things work, I would say, um, do you know, do what you can to save it, and if you can't, then you can't. But once you find out, or once you get out of denial of whatever it is, then you need to make a decision on what you're gonna do, because you know it depends on if you got kids or who else is being affected in the whole um, situation. So it's yeah. best to kind of like you know end it, and hopefully can end it on a good note, which a lot of people can't. But you know. Mm-hmm. especially if you got kids we got kids so you try to you know to work together at this point yeah so for kids. and I know I've had friends um I'm not married yet or I'm getting married now but um you know I have people that have been through divorce and um I know some people that had rocky ending and some that said you know we really focused on being positive for our children um you know and I think that's it's, it's got to be hard to make that transition. Like you said, it is grief process. It is a grief process that you go through because it's a change and you grieve change in life, you know? Um, and it sounds like, you know, with you being as strong as you are, um, what would you tell your younger self, the person that you are now that you're so strong now, What's some of the things, the advice that you would give the younger you, either before marriage or right at getting married? What what advice would you give your younger self? To give it time, time, make sure you know what you're dealing with or who you're, you know, linking up with. Make sure that all your loose ends are tied up. Mm. Um, Like I got married, like, the semester before I was supposed to get my master's and I didn't, I never finished it. So I would say, finish up all your loose ends, you know, make sure that everything that you set out to do is complete before you take on another phase of your life with somebody else. Cause then you're actually potentially taking on their life too, because now you're going to be a motivator, uh, you know, for this other person. So make sure you take care of your business first. Yeah, that's good. That's very good advice. Very good. 
And tell us now, what things are you working on now to give back to the community and give back to other people? So right now I'm working on um, a black owned black design social media website. It's called myfavorite.com, M-Y-F-A-V-R-T.com. And basically it's um, a sharing app to where, say if I'm visiting somewhere, if one of our members have posted about it, I might just want to check that out or vice versa. Say if I have a brand new pair of shoes that are like the most comfortable shoes, I'm going to post about that. And then somebody might want to say, hey, I'm going to try those shoes because she posted about it. And so it's basically a sharing informational website. You can um, share your your businesses, um, just all your likes. So that way someone may be able to benefit off of something that you try. That way they don't have to go and try something. They already have you saying, hey, this is a good product. I really liked it and you should try it. Now you have somebody advocating for that product, like, okay, I'm gonna try it. As opposed to you going to just blindly trying something and now you're stuck with something you don't even like. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's really unique. And I like the fact that, like you said, if you're going to different places, then you can go right to the, you know, the website and say, you know what, I'm in California, or I'm in um, you know, anywhere in New York. Oh, this person been to this place. I got to try this out. Cause that's so hard when you go visit new places or if you're shopping right? and you saw some new shoes on the website, then, Oh, these shoes, mm-hmm. I saw those shoes and they're so comfortable. I'm going to try them out for myself too. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Any other things you're working on? Um, just, uh, that's about it. Like my main focus, that's like consuming like all my time right now. So it's like, uh, it's a beast in itself, just like the whole initial startup phase. So yeah, day to day, that's what I'm breathing right now. (laughs) My favorite.com. Yeah. And so you say you're in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that being a woman in law enforcement? How's that going? And what are what's some things that you had to um, encounter with being in law enforcement? Well, um, you know, being a woman in a lot of the fields are, you know, difficult to where we're still trying to um, get up and match our male counterparts because, you know, it's a more male dominated um, occupation. Yeah. We just have to keep on moving because if not, um, you're only as good as your weakest link. So as a woman, it's like you have to work a little, you got to work harder. It's not even work a little bit hard. You got to work harder. That way you'll get the recognition that your male counterparts are getting. Um, Just the whole climate these days with the whole um, community relations. I um, I pride myself with that being a community um, resource as far as being able to talk to people, Growing up in the inner city, already I've seen the struggles to where I understand. Mm-hmm. I understand like your recollection of a situation may be different from a counterpart that's never dealt with that community. So it's good to kind of like be able to be an advocate for some people that don't really have a voice for themselves. Yeah. And so when you um, come, it's like they gravitate towards you to tell you because they know that you're going to understand. They feel more comfortable with you. So yeah. I kind of appreciate that. Well, awesome. Well, thank you for, um, you know, protecting and serving, um, you know, because just as um, I work with veterans now and, and I just think about the fact you are sacrificing your life every day to serve and protect your community and, and serve, protect the people that you are working with. So I definitely thank you for that. And, you know, being a woman out here, it's good to see a woman that is um, a black woman too, to being strong and out here um, working on law enforcement and making sure that we all know that we can be good. There's good law enforcement out there. There's people out there for a good reason to protect and serve, went into law enforcement for a reason. And I just appreciate that. I didn't even know that till today. So I definitely am happy that you you are doing that. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming to Wrinkles and sharing today. I really appreciate it, sis. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We will... 
follow your um, link. I'll put the link up and everybody go and um, join and start putting your favorite places and favorite things and let's share, share, share. So thank, thank you, you so much. Bye wrinkles. Bye-bye.